If you're a new player to Destiny 2, welcome. If you're a returner, welcome back. And if you're a god that obliterates everything in your path, then get out of here. No, but on a serious note, welcome or welcome back to Destiny 2. In this video we're going to go over 10 tips and tricks to help guide you throughout the game, understand the game more clearer, and understand the main aspects of Destiny 2 for what you should focus on most as a new or returning player. As an experienced player, you may or may not find this guide useful, so I'll leave timestamps below so that you can skip ahead to certain parts of the guide. Now as a featured guide video, this is being sponsored by Awea. They offer Destiny 2 Silver at a much cheaper price that is reliable and safe. If you're interested, see the link below along with my discount code. Now with that being said, if you find this guide useful, be sure to leave a rating, comment your thoughts, subscribe and share for more, and without further delay, let's get straight into it. Now getting straight into our first tip here, know the power caps of a given season and the reset system. In Destiny 2, there's a system in place that allows your characters to progress further to a certain point every season. This is called power leveling, and the amount of power you need in a given season can vary. There's also a system called reset, but let's start with the reset. What is it, and when is it? Reset in Destiny 2, in simple terms, means, well, things reset in the game. For example, on a weekly reset, powerful and pinnacle rewards reset, so you can gain new powerful and pinnacle rewards to level up your gear power. Some activities also change on a rotation, so for example, the Nightfall Strike one week could be the Hollowed Layer, and then the next week could be Lake of Shadows. Without the reset happening, things in the game would come to a standstill, and you wouldn't be able to progress and advance further in the game, and well, things would become extremely repetitive. The reset in Destiny 2 is broken down into five parts. You have the Daily Reset, Weekend Reset, Weekly Reset, Seasonal Reset, and the Yearly Reset. The reset time in which they happen depends on your country and time of year. In the UK, the reset time is 6pm GMT plus 1 during Daylight Savings Time from the end of March to the end of October, and then 5pm from October to March. So change that time to your time zone, and you'll know what the reset time is for you. Now starting with a daily reset. A daily reset happens daily, and only a few things change. Usually stock from vendors rotate, modifiers and activities, Legend of Master Lost Sectors change, and most minor things that don't give you big rewards. A daily reset isn't really that important. The next reset is the weekends on Fridays. Every Friday at reset time, Zer arrives in a location for you to buy powerful exotics and gear from him, and the competitive mode Trials of Osiris starts. This ends on Tuesday at the weekly reset, which brings us to the next reset, which is the weekly reset, and that is every Tuesday. Now this reset is where most things reset or change like powerful and pinnacle rewards, activities rotate such as nightfalls, raid challenges, eververse cosmetics, crucible game modes, seasonal activities, and so on. In some cases, at the start of a new season, the first few weeks can introduce new quests, triumphs, and a bunch of other new content at a weekly reset. Most players will usually come into the game every Tuesday at reset time just to see what's new and grind out anything specifically exclusive to that given week. There are tools and websites like Today and Destiny that can give you a small schedule or calendar of what to expect in the weeks ahead. For the seasonal reset, this is where the majority of content comes from. This usually happens every 12 to 16 weeks, so approximately every 12 weekly resets, a new season will begin. When a new season begins, the max power level increases by plus 10, pushing both the powerful and pinnacle cap upwards for you to grind out more endgame content. Additionally, you'll get a new seasonal story, quests, mini campaign, new weapons and gear, and so on. There are usually four seasonal resets, also known as a new season, before the yearly reset happens, which introduces a brand new major expansion release. A season is like currently, season 15 going into season 16 as of making this video, and a new expansion on a yearly reset is like Beyond Light from 2020, lasting up to 2022 with four seasons, some of which were delayed, and heading into the Witch Queen release, which will have another four seasons as well. So for the yearly reset, you'll get a brand new expansion release, along with four seasons that spread out through the year. For 2022 and 2023, you'll have Witch Queen, with seasons 16 to 19. From 2023 to 2024, you should have Lightfall, with seasons 20 to 23. And then in 2024, we have the final shape, with seasons 24 to 27, and so on. That is what we know that is confirmed by Bungie themselves, the developers of the game, and is supposedly the end of the first saga, or chapter, of Destiny 2, in which we may see the start of a new chapter. So the start of a new expansion, all resets happen simultaneously, introducing a whole new story with a new destination to explore, and is much larger than a standard season. Your power level cap also rises by hundreds. Now the power leveling system, it's broken down into four parts. You have the floor level, the soft cap, the powerful cap, and the hard cap, or pinnacle cap. The floor level is the starting power that everyone starts from at the start of a new expansion every yearly reset. 
For a Witch Queen, everyone in the game, regardless of your progression, will start at 1350 power. You will then have to grind to the next stage of power, and this can be quite confusing and long to explain, so I will have a separate video linked with this one, for Witch Queen, to help you understand how to power level in Destiny 2 quickly. So a quick run through of this for Season 16 on Witch Queen, the floor level is 1350, the soft cap is 1500, the powerful cap is 1550, and the hard cap is 1560. To get to the soft cap, you can do any type of activity that rewards any blue or purple reward, but mostly legendary engrams or drops. To get to the powerful cap, you have to get rewards from powerful reward sources such as doing seasonal activities and tower challenges. And then to get to the hard cap, you have to do pinnacle rewards from end game content like nightfalls, raids and dungeons. Again, if you need help power leveling, see the separate video linked below because there is a lot more to it than just seeing a number rise, as there is also artifact power on top of this. Moving on to our next tip, know the gear and ingram colours. These are common, which is white, uncommon which is green, rare which is blue, legendary prime and pinnacle which are purple, the ones that you'll focus on most during endgame, and exotic. These are yellow, which are supposed to be the most powerful weapons and armour in the game, with special traits or perks. There is also one more that people mostly forget about, which are the bright ingrams, and these are used at the Eververse store to unlock new cosmetics. So as you play, you'll see these ingrams lying around on the floor after popping out from an enemy, or you'll gain weapons and armour that have a certain colour, so that is what they refer to. There's not much to really explain here, other than just knowing that the main focus should be prime ingrams and powerful and pinnacle rewards. Basically, purple coloured weapons or ingrams. You can farm exotics from lost sectors, but again, I'll have another separate video guide for that too. Tip number 3. Know the critical points. All enemies have a weak spot, also known as a crit point. Usually this would be the head where you deal bonus damage, but all enemies have a different crit point such as Vex being the bright white part in their body, and some enemies may have additional crit points like a bowl where you can shoot their tanky thing and just let it go kaboom. So just play around and torture enemies to death to find their crit point and you'll get the hang of it after a bit of experience. It's also worth noting that you can create a crit point using a divinity, which is an exotic weapon, and be aware when you are shooting enemies because sometimes you or your allies may weaken them for bonus damage, which is called a D buff against an enemy using certain weapons or abilities that may look like you're shooting a crit spot, but you're probably just shooting them because they have been weakened. So you should still aim for the crit spot unless it's a divinity being used on them. Don't worry about buffs and debuffs early on in the game though. Tip number 4. Know the damage types and shields. These are Kinetic, Solar, Void, Arc and Stasis. When attacking an enemy with Kinetic weapons or an energy weapon with the incorrect element, you'll notice a major difference in taking that shield down. Although you can take the shield down, it becomes much easier and quicker if using a weapon that matches the shield's element. For example, use an arc weapon against arc shields. Note that in activities where modifiers have been implemented, like match game, you'll find yourself struggling to take down shields unless you have that element to match the shield. You should familiarise yourself with shields and elemental damage types, because all enemies have their own shield element, like fallen captains being arc, Vex Minotaurs being void, and so on. It may take some time to get used to, but you don't need to worry about it unless you're doing extremely difficult endgame content. Next up, understand the armour stats and what to look out for. In Destiny 2, you have a bunch of different stats that you can max out to 100. The stats come from all your armour combined to add up to your total across your character. For example, if you have 20 mobility in the helmet, and 20 mobility in the arms, but 0 for the rest of your armour, your overall mobility is going to be 40. There are 6 different stat types. These are Mobility, Resilience, Recovery, Discipline, Intellect, and Strength. Mobility determines how fast you move and how high you jump, but it's also the Hunter's specific stat to reduce their class ability's cooldown. A class ability is your character's unique ability that you can use like a Hunter has a Dodge, a Warlock has a Rift, and a Titan has a Barricade. You may have probably used them at this point, so the higher their mobility, the quicker you'll get your Hunter's Dodge ability back. Resilience increases the damage you can take before dying, Useless in PvE, but I believe you want a minimum of 60 inside of PvP. That is if you don't want to get completely hammered by 120 hand cannon users. Resilience is also the stat for titans to get their barricade back quicker. Recovery is how quick you can recharge your shields, and that is the stat for the warlocks to get their rift back quicker. Discipline reduces the cooldown of your grenade ability, intellect reduces the cooldown of your super, and strength reduces the cooldown of your melee ability. Titans should max out their resilience stat to 100 for their ability cooldown, warlocks should max out recovery, and Hunters should max out mobility. This is so that your specific characters can get their abilities back a lot faster than normal, with the stat being as high as possible. The other three stats, Discipline, Intellect and Strength, depends on your build. I won't get into builds today, but I do cover them weekly, so you can follow along here on the channel if you need to, but say for example you're a grenade build, you'd want to max out Discipline to 100. For PvP, 
always max out recovery and intellect as a priority regardless of your class. It's worth noting that there are certain exotics that can boost your stats beyond 100 by passing the max stat rule, but I won't get into those as they are more advanced and this is supposed to be a basic guide for new players. If you want an advanced version, let me know. The next tip is your vault and item managers. You can use the vault to store any of your gear that you want to keep and it will be safe there permanently, even if you delete your character. You can also transfer gear across characters by accessing your vault on any character, essentially putting anything in and taking anything out, regardless of what character you are on. The vault is linked to your whole account, but you can use item managers to transfer items across your characters without using the vault and going to it in game. Regular players with multiple characters use item managers and apps like the vault, or more commonly, Destiny Item Manager. You can use these to log into your account off the game and transfer gear across your characters using an item manager. This is much easier and quicker than going to it manually at the tower. I'll leave a link below to another video that goes through the best websites and apps to use to make your Destiny 2 experience much better and much easier. Move into tip number 7, your collections. Everything you obtain in the game will automatically be put into your collections, so don't worry about discarding cosmetics to save space like ghost shells and sparrows as you can pull them back out from your collection screen at any time for a small cost. However, you can't pull out weapons and armour that have random rules, so be aware of that and use your vault to put your favourite weapons in to keep safely and don't dismantle them because you won't get them back if you do. Tip number 8, Exotics and Xur. Make sure to visit Xur every Friday when he arrives. He'll be at a different location each time and if you don't know where that is, there are plenty of Xur videos out there. Xur will sell things like old armour, legendary weapons and exotics that you can buy. Xur does sell high stat exotics as well so you definitely want to make sure you grab them if it is the right stat you're looking for, for your builds. He also sells an exotic ingram and you can use an exotic cypher on the ingram after buying the first one for shards. You can buy two per week across your account and they will give you an exotic that you don't currently own from the past years, except the current one. So if you're trying to get something specific to a character, make sure to buy it on that character. Now tip number nine, weapon god rules. With the weapon crafting coming in Witch Queen, it's worth knowing what the best rules are for weapons and what to look out for. For PvP, you usually want to max out range on weapons and have perks that can increase ADS or draw time, as well as increasing the reload stat or buffing your weapon damage. There are good places like Light GG and D2 Gunsmith that I'll also have linked below where you can pretty much build your weapon god rule and see what perks can roll on a weapon pre-Witch Queen and have an idea of what rules you should be mixing and going for. Lastly for tip number 10, mods and builds. Make sure to visit people like Ada1 or Gunsmith or anyone that sells mods because you want to pick up every mod that you possibly can as they do sometimes rotate, which means a mod on sale today might not be back for 5 months. So it is worth having for the builds that you'll create later down the line. Now there are different types of mods in the games that make a build. You've got things like Warmind mods, Charger Light mods and Elemental Well mods. Each mod type are sort of like a category that will work well with another mod in the same category. Now mods will be used in your builds to make your character better by things like increasing your weapon damage, giving you more survivability, making your abilities better and so on. To start making a build, you want to slot mods into your armour. For example, let's set up a quick basic build where we can have more survivability in endgame PvE. In the helmet I'll slot on a taken charge. This is a charge light mod where picking up an orb of power will give us a charge light stack. This stack is used on a charge light mod of your choice to give you a buff or benefit to your character. So we will pick up an orb of power generated by either of the players or yourself and then that will make us charge a light. Then we'll also slot in another charge light mod that uses that charge light stack. Let's go with protective light. Now this is a void mod so you'll see a void element next to the mod. This means that you have to place the mod into void armour where you see the same element when upgrading armour. So we'll slot that on and it says we will be able to resist more damage when our shields break. That's exactly what will happen and it will use that charge light stack we gained earlier. That's essentially how mods work. The same would go with elemental well mods. Have a source to generate an elemental well and then have another mod that would give us a benefit when picking up that elemental well generated. It may take some time to get used to so it's best having a play around for a while or watch some of my build videos where I set up builds for you and all you need to do is apply the mods and understand how it works. It's also worth noting that in your armour you will only see mods that can be applied to the armour. So if you're looking at the mods available in your arc armour you're not going to see things like protective light in there as that is a void mod. Now just a few quick bonus tips here. Infusing gear. You can go into your weapons and armour and infuse gear to bring that specific weapon or armour piece up to the same power level as the armour you're infusing. I would avoid doing this too much at the beginning of the game as they are costly and you only need to worry about your power level being high when you're going into harder endgame content. The next bonus tip is ghosts. 
you can use your ghost to slot on ghost specific mods that will increase material drops or XP. I recommend slotting in an XP mod so that you can level up a lot faster. Now as a new player, don't focus too much on unlocking everything. You want to focus more on levelling up to the max power level and completing the story quest first. Once you've done that, then focus on farming and grinding new exotics, god roll weapons, high stat armour, playing end game raids and nightfalls, completing triumphs and then collecting everything else in the game. If you want a full in depth guide to power levelling, you can find a link below or card on screen to that video next, where we explain how to level up fast in Destiny 2 Witch Queen and what you need to do to get to the next power cap. This video will be out and updated for Witch Queen in Season 16 on the 22nd of February, so stay tuned and I'll see you guys over there next. You can find more useful information and links below to help you out further or ask any questions you need in the comments. Or join our Discord server link below and I'm happy to help and assist every single person when I can. Thank you all so much for tuning in and until the next video, peace.